After Unreal Engine released PCG, I got really excited to create large worlds with it, since it's very similar to Houdini procedural nodes. In this video, I'll be combining both Houdini and PCG to create procedural environments. This is an example of a building with, this is the meshes and this is the point clouds. So the, each of these points have attributes that correspond to the meshes and they have uh, rotation and scale and so on. So the copied points have piece attribute, mesh underscore ID. That's how we know that this is mesh zero, one, two, and so on. And they can be spawned based on those attributes. So once I'm happy with this and I want to export that into the engine using PCG, I can export either with Alembic or CSV. So two ways. So I export the point cloud separately and I export the meshes separately. And I go into the engine. This is the point cloud. And in this case, it's the Alembic example. And I'll show the building. Once I'm happy with this, an environment artist comes in and they can change these meshes into something more detailed. So for example, I'll replace this with this example here. So a modeler or environment artist can recreate these simple meshes into something more detailed. And of course, we do still have the ability to do the procedural stuff like I want it to be a bit bigger like that and then export again, go into the engine and change the seed just so that it updates because that's how Alembic works. Okay, so now that we have that done, you can see how we can work procedurally uh, with uh, technical artists, environment artists, everyone can work together that way. Okay, uh, let's look at the pipeline. So this is the pipeline. You start in Houdini, you make a point cloud, and you export that into Unreal using CSV or Alembic. Then the environment artist can update these models, modules into something more detailed, and you have a full game ready for gameplay. But uh, we have another approach, and you can use Houdini Engine. Uh, and export as instances and uh, you can also go into Houdini engine export as PCG into Unreal same way uh, but like package the whole thing inside an HDA and the main reason you would do this is so that you can separate uh, Houdini and Unreal uh, so Houdini users can deal with point clouds and uh, Unreal users that don't have uh, Houdini Engine, uh, they can use the, the point cloud and that was exported through PCG. And they can use the meshes they want and apply them on this PCG point cloud. So it's a collaborative way of working with technical artists and other environment artists that don't have Houdini or cannot use it. So th that way you can both can work together in this proced procedural system that is uh, bridged with this PCG workflow. One thing to keep in mind that C CSV will only work uh, with 5.2 and forwards. Uh, that's the CSV tool that uh, we've made. The Alembic uh, workflow works with 5.4 and forward. Although Alembic does exist in 5.3, but it does not have the ability to do this match and set attribute workflow, which is critical for uh, uh, remaking this environment that you've made in Houdini, remaking that in Tony. So this is the limitation here. Um, and uh, we can uh, spawn things like static meshes, actors, prefabs, and we can do material overrides on static meshes. So this is the workflow here. So the meshes, you create them, you create the point cloud, you use the copy to points to visualize in Houdini. But what you export is the point cloud with CSV and, or Alembic. You export the meshes as FBX or whatever. You have, and you have these two workflows. So the Alembic has a bigger setup in the PCG graph, but the CSV is simply just one node. 
but it does have limitations compared to the Alembic. Alembic can handle way more points than CSV. You might hit some limits at some point. Um, so for cities, I would recommend uh, Alembic, but something smaller. P uh, CSV is much uh, m much simpler uh, setup. And then uh, you get the mesh, and as you can see, these are blue because there were some material overrides there. We'll get into that. And then uh, finally, you have the environment artist. They replace the meshes into something more detailed, and you have a full game ready for gameplay.